Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to start by giving a shout out to the Lord for mild weather. <laughs> People like me prefer it a little warmer. And for this season, with the prices, the cost of gas, mild weather, thank you, Lord. Have you ever felt a sense of being left out in a quiz night? Oh boy, I hate quiz nights with my workmates when we go and they begin quizzing around hair shampoos. <laughs> the different types of hair shampoos and what hair shampoos do to certain types of hairs, ginger hair. I don't have ginger hair. I had no idea what ginger hair is. Quiz nights that talk about Christmas. Christmas quiz nights are the hardest, especially when they're not really talking about the Bible. They have all these characters. If you are like me and you feel inadequate sometimes, this message is for you. For those of you who have uh, been Christians for a while, have you ever felt inadequate when the Lord invites you to undertake a certain task? A little nudge on the train. Guy with a beard. Yes, the one who looks really mean. Yeah. Can you go over? And you knew that it was the Lord telling you. But you just... You just didn't have it. And the train stopped and you left. And the whole day you were thinking, what could God have done if I'd said yes? Me too. I have felt that way. Where I didn't do what I needed to do. For all sorts of reasons. If you are like that, this message is for you this morning. This message is for you if you have felt like a hidden figure because you are a foreigner. I am. I'm a British citizen, but I'm a foreigner. Some of you are probably asylum seekers, and we live around people like that. And all of us, by the way, have been on holiday, remember? When you couldn't speak the language and it felt you were hidden, you're outside. What they're talking about, no clue. We've got people who are non native English speakers here. And they listen to the message and they make out what the pastor is saying. It gets worse when Huntington is speaking, because now it's English in an African accent. <laughs> and then, no, 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 not all Africa, it's not Nigerian, it, it's Ugandan accent, so you get really confused. If you have been like that, you felt out of your depth because you are in a different environment, and so you are unable to perform, you are unable to bring your whole self this message is for you. Let's get to work. We are continuing our series on advance. We have been pursuing the acts of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts in the Bible. And we've been looking at people like you and me through whom the Holy Spirit has been working. The message today is titled, A Mission-Focused Church. And the subtitle of my message today will be, Never Split the Difference. You are different. I am different. We all are different. But never try to minimize that difference. God wants to use that difference. 
Our scripture is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. And I'm going to read from the New International Version of the UK. Before I read, let me pray. Spirit of the Lord, <laughs> come down in your mighty power. We are ready. This is your word, and only you can make it sensible to us. So as we look at it, as we read it, communicate the mind of God to us today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The story is about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Verse 26, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way was sitting in a chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go. Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked the black man. I just added the black man. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, he did not open his mouth. In his uh, humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked, Philip, t -t -t tell me, tell me, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out, out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again. But he went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared in Azontas and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of God. Do you sometimes enjoy, when you're taking apart these scriptures, I sometimes transpose myself in the context, and I listen to the wheels of the chariots, and I see the dust, and I see a guy wearing a tunic. You know how those guys, the Jews dress up? They don't dress up in trousers properly, you know, those days at least. And he's running. Yeah, I do get those pictures. But let's tear apart this scripture. Let's see what the Lord is wanting to communicate to us today about advancing. We have three characters, and I will talk about them, and they will help us to understand this passage. First character, the angel. It begins with the angel of the Lord said, 
any sensible advancement is sparked off by the Holy Spirit. We're talking advancing. Whether God wants you to advance in your ministry, whether God wants you to advance in your marriage, whether God wants you to advance in reaching out to different communities, it starts with the Lord saying, You see, it's the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weakness. It's the Holy Spirit who prays for us with groans and prayers that cannot be uttered. It's the Holy Spirit who comforts us. Our friends, Rick and Lulu, need to advance. But only the Holy Spirit can help them. We can go around them. But the real deal is the Holy Spirit. Do you know him? Has he recently been whispering some things to you? Go to church. Forgive that person. Talk to that neighbor. Advancing starts by listening to the Holy Spirit. And so we must cultivate. If you do not know how, come talk to me. Come talk to these leaders. Every believer must come to that point where they are able to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And that ability is sharpened by continuous obedience. You obey the first time, the next time it's easier, and the third time it's easier to tell the difference. But by all means, the Holy Spirit was there. So he says to Philip, go, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down to Jerusalem and to Gaza. Character number two is Philip. First off, I want to tell you, this should not be confused with a Philip who was a disciple of Jesus. The guy who was in the front line, the guys who were known by Jesus, an apostle of Jesus. No, this is not the Philip who was there when they were distributing the, the fish. And this is not the, the Philip who Jesus saw when he was resurrected did that Philip who say to Jesus, just show us the Father and, and that will be it. Remember that Philip? This is not that Philip. This is a different Philip. And this Philip identifies with us. He identifies with me. When the angel confronted Philip with his assignment, Philip was living or staying in Samaria. Now, Philip was a Jew. He shouldn't have been in Samaria. He was in Samaria because of conflict. He was an asylum seeker there. A hidden figure. Different from the majority. I identify with Philip. And you too, sometimes. Until this time in the Bible, nothing much is known about him. He was only appointed to serve disgruntled widows. Even among the Jews, he was not son of the soil, as we call it in Africa. You're not the real, you know, you're not, you're not really the son of the soil. He was a Greek. He was a Jew, but from Europe. <laughs> he was a refugee, I've already said. He was an asylum seeker when he was confronted. He was a hidden figure. Even in Israel, Philip himself was a foreigner. And yet, he is the star whom the Holy Spirit chooses to use in this passage today. He led, before this passage, Philip had led extensive evangelistic campaigns in Samaria, in that city. You see, Samaria was a city of mixed people. Their occupiers had mixed up with the Jews who were living in Samaria... And they had come up with a certain group that was a little different. They spoke Aramaic as well, but a different kind of version. And they, they had adopted a lot of uh, characteristics of their occupiers. And so the Jews felt, these guys are not like us. Yeah, they would have related to them, but they're not like them. We know that Philip had two unmarried daughters. Later we learn about that in uh, Acts 21. And he is the only person who is called the evangelist in the book of Acts 21.9. 
mixed race, Jewish, European. He, couldn't, he could definitely identify with a mixed race, Samaritans. His difference made the difference. Your being different makes the difference to someone else. God wants to use your difference. Do not split it if he's going to advance. So what hinders you? What are the voices? I'm not educated. I'm not English. I don't speak the language well. I have not been trained in the theological college. So I can't do that. This message is for you. Number three, the Ethiopian. The Ethiopian was different. Oh boy, the Ethiopian was different. He was educated, an economist like Sunday Martin. He was rich and powerful, like, I won't say that, with connections to the queen, <laughs> to the queen in the country, of his country. He had chariots. He, he even had bodyguards. You remember when he says he commanded they stop the chariot. He was surrounded. He was powerful. He was different. He was black. Coming in the Jewish neighborhood at the time, he, 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 he was being confronted by Philip, a white Jewish boy. And he was on a desert road. Desert isolated, nothing happens in the desert. Who goes to the desert? Who cares about a black man in the desert? I'm here to tell you, if you feel like that, feel like you're on a desert road, no one probably is able to see you. Around you is dust and molds and creatures that are really dangerous if they bite. That's your world. I'm here to tell you, the Holy Spirit is sending you someone. But also, if you are like Philip, the Holy Spirit is sending you to some people in their deserts. Some people who do not feed. Some people who are in a place where they're confused. He was a foreigner from outside the region. He spoke another language. Now, he had a problem or so. He was a eunuch. And a eunuch was a job hazard. Serving a woman boss those days, you had to be castrated. There was an alteration of your anatomy. And we can see from this study that we don't even, he's not even dignified with a name. He's called Ethiopian and he's called eunuch. Both these names sound a little derogatory. Ethiopian is racist, if we were saying it today. And his job, not even his job, it's they're not even saying he was an Ethiopian economist. No, <laughs> they say he's an Ethiopian eunuch. And that's what the world does. It knows how to name our weakness. You are called that woman who failed. You're called that man who never succeeds. You're called that guy who is incompetent. And you feel that way about yourself. This is where the Ethiopian eunuch finds himself. Although educated, he couldn't understand the text he was reading. Why? The text had not been written for him. It was written for other people. He was a Gentile, an African. He was an outsider. He was different. And sometimes I relate to that. I remember when I first read the Bible, I would read about these fruits that don't, have, that don't exist in Africa. Grapes. Africa, we didn't have grapes. We're now growing them in greenhouses, but we never had them when I was growing up. Olives. That was a name of girls. Olive. And yet, we have to relate with this Bible. Let's give a shout to those people who are helping people like me, people like the Ethiopian, to understand. Some people in this church are helping people to learn English. 
They want to relate with the Bible, but they, don't, they can't read it. They want to read it, but they don't understand it. Let's give a shout to the people in Samir's team who are helping us in Alpha, helping people who want to understand Jesus and get on the journey. Kudos to you guys. Thank you. This church has over 40 nationalities. Who are you avoiding to speak to because I don't think I'll understand their accent. So in the group in the middle of a the middle service or at the end of the service, you see them coming and you, 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 you know, because you, you don't know what to do with them, you know, and it's not that you're a bad person. Let's take, as I end, let's have three takeaways from my message today. So what is God saying to us today? Point number one, just do it. Put yourself at the Holy Spirit's disposal. Be like Philip. Maybe we could introduce baby Jesus to people who only see Santa as the Christmas figure this Christmas. Maybe that's the part you could play. play. Jesus has become a hidden figure, by the way, in his own Christmas. In Uganda, we say he's dying in his own movie. The star dies in his own movie. Jesus seems to die in his own movie. Christmas, we talk about Santa. Easter, we talk about a rabbit that lays eggs. I, I don't understand. Which rabbit lays eggs? And yet, I think it is an attempt to take our attention away from Jesus, hide him away. So the Holy Spirit is probably letting us understand we've been invited to, 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 to participate in Love Christmas. Loads of opportunities. Find those who are hidden. Let Jesus be unhidden to other people. Just do what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do today. As a home group, we, have, we are going to put a Christmas carols in front of my house. We're going to beam the words in front, and we have borrowed some sound, and somebody's coming to play a keyboard for us, and we're inviting our neighbors. He's saying, hey, you might not come to church, but here, come. And once they come and sing some carols, we tell them, oh, there's another place you could actually sing which is more comfortable because they'll be outside. We'll give them some mulled wine and some warm drinks. You can do something to get Jesus unhidden. I'm just making a point for Jesus here. But there are those people who are hidden who you can do something about. And just do it. When you hear the Holy Spirit nudging you, just do it. That's my point number one. Point number two. Be like the Ethiopian. If you are that hidden figure, ask for help. He acknowledged he did not understand what he was reading. Educated, important, guarded. But in this context, he didn't understand. Why don't you understand? There are home groups. There are tri groups. There are men and women fellowships. Join the things. Find someone. Ask a question, but by all means, do not remain hidden. The Lord wants to help you. Have the boldness. You see, there are things that stop us from experiencing God. Those cultures, oh, I'm going to offend them. It feels like surrendering my control. We don't do that around here. Fear is perceived as needy. Oh, I'm going to look needy. There's a scripture that I put in my notes in Mark 7, 13. It says, therefore, you nullify the word of God by your traditions. The word of God wants to work in you, but you nullify it because you feel like, oh, we don't do it here. Oh, we don't do it like that. And the Holy Spirit is saying things to you. And you're unable to lay hold of it because of your traditions. The Holy Spirit wants to do something fresh in you. But be like the Ethiopian. Accept where you don't know and find help. He wants to reach you. Finally, nothing hinders you. This is what the Ethiopian said. Look, Philip, here's the water. What hinders you? Yes, you are different. We know that. But that difference with God 
makes a difference. Yeah? Do not be hindered. This Christmas, advance. Advance, child of God. Advance to receive Jesus. Some of you haven't made that advancement. You're saying, if I go, what about all these sins I've committed? Don't worry about that. Just advance and take hold of what Jesus is laying out for you. This Christmas, let's advance and reach out to those who are hidden. Nothing hinders us. This Christmas, no one should have Christmas alone. Every Christmas, we look in church and we find people who are new, who have no someone to, to have Christmas with. No one should have Christmas in their hotel room. When we're here, let's advance and find those hidden figures. Let's pray. If you have not yet said yes to Jesus, this is an opportunity for you to step out and advance and say yes to Jesus. If you are like that, you can repeat after me these words. Dear Jesus, come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you have said that prayer, Jesus hears that prayer and comes into your life and abides with you. And for the rest of us, Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to those among us to whom you are at work. Open our eyes to those who have been hidden by all manner of circumstances. And give us the courage to go over to their courage. Give us the boldness to go over to their chariot. Give us the boldness to break the ice of tradition that your word will come through to your people this Christmas. Thank you, Lord. Amen.